Anyway, so we already talked about the shift and about it operation last time, right? How are we gonna build a circuit? We said you can make it sequential, right? Like you already have a sequential like this circuit. Here is like a multi stages. You push here the SI, and then you know you can every single time when you push one time you will read what is written, right? And you spill out here, spill. Out. If you are, this is basically what shift is. If you like to rotate, you can make it like that. One, two, three, four, you can do it like this. And they're gonna be, if you would like to push with zero, and then you know you can make here like an input, and then you start getting the output every time you would like to do. It's just a process, right? It's understandable. It's not really a rocket science. And here's the multiplexers, either that you would like to shift or you would like to lock it down to be what looping back so you can rotate. And we figure out how to rotate left and right from rotate left, right? We discussed about that, you know, for instance, you know, if you have N bit register, then, you know, rotate or right to uh, N divided by two is equal to rotate left N divided by two, right? Then, you know, rotate right N equal to rotate left N time equal the original. And then, you know, also we said rotate left one is equal to rotate right n minus one. So rotate left L is equal to rotate right n minus L and so on. And rotate right L is a rotate le left n minus L. We came with this conclusion last time, right? Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay, how are we gonna build it? You know, now we understand how to make it serial, right? It's just like have a register and it's gonna be CISO or CPO or whatever. And then, you know, you, you will, every time you will reduce what, you will consume one cycle, that mean a fixed period of time to what, to shift or rotate one, one time left or right or whatever, right? But what about if you would like to apply shifting and rotation in parallel? Shifting and rotation in what? Parallel. What does it mean in parallel? Parallel processing. So in that case, I can build to you a combinational circuit that will perform shifting and rotation. Sounds good? That's called barrel. Shifter or barrel rotation, or rotation. So how it works? Basically, no. We use combinational circuit multiplexers two x one in building a multi-level network of multiplexers. What does it mean? So, for instance, you know, if I have a four bit, four bit. Register and I would like to barrel use barrel shifter methodology to shift it. How I'm gonna do it? Basically, I have to follow some steps. First of all, you know, I need to define levels. How many levels I have, and how many level is gonna be log to number of bits the register has. So in this case, it's gonna be what log two of four, which is what two so that means i have to what two levels then i know for sure how many multiplexers i will be using so this is actually defined per level so per level i should use uh four max two x one so in total in total number of multiplexers I have is what? It's gonna be uh, levels times number of max per level. 
all right so that means you know i have two time four so i should use eight multiplex or two x one to build such a kind of what uh bell shift so far so good yes so generalizing it in bit register number of levels equal log two of n right number of multiplexers per level is equal n total number of multiplexers to do this process it's going to be what n time log 2n okay now let's be specific in the design but how it works it's going to work based on the the process we learned about 2 power 0 2 power 1 2 power 2 or 2 2 power 0 2 power 1 2 power 2 what does it mean in a binary we are weighted system right b1 b2 bn 2 power 0 2 power 1 2 power 2 da, 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 2 power n we're gonna have something is called distance have you guys heard about something distancing have you guys heard about something it's called smith waterman i have not okay so in general there's something it's called distancing what is this distancing you know every single level has its own distance so level this is actually belong to level one this is belong to level two. This is belong to level three. This is belong to level what? N plus one. What does it mean? In the following, if I want to shift four bit using barrel shifter, we have to follow the steps, which is basically I have four multiplexer, as you can see here in the first level. Right? Then the second level have what same number, right? So that's actually L level uh, zero, level one, right? Now, if every single level will be sharing the same what selector, every single level will share the same what selector. So this is the same selector. Same selectors, same selectors, same selectors. Sound good? Now, the output of this, let's say that, you know, here is my final circuit. One, two, three. I, zero, I, one, I, two, I, three. Here is P, zero, P, one, P, two, P, three. Those are the output. So here is going to be the output. P, zero, P, one, P, two, P, three. Now, every single multiplexer has a choice. Zero and one, 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 zero and one. Zero and one. How I'm going to sort them? It's based on the distance, as we said. So, you know, this is the level zero, which is my level here, right? Two power zero is what? What is two power zero? One. One. So that means distance between the pair of inputs, it should be one. So if my started here and say this is I zero, so the second input for this multiplexer should be what? I zero plus one. So it's gonna be what? I one. But this is the first bit. This is the first bit. Second bit is what? Is I one. So it should be here what? I one. But the second neighbor, for this multiplexer should be what? I1 plus one. So it's gonna be I2. Then you know, what is the third bit will be? I what? I2. Then you know, what is the neighbor? I2 plus one. So it's gonna be I3. Then I3 is going there, right? I3 plus one, it should be I what? I0. I zero, exactly. If you are what? Rounding, if you are just rotating. But if you don't want to rotate, 
it can be what you're gonna push with zero. So it will be zero. So far so good. So if we were put I zero, I'd be rotating. Yes. We're gonna do both, but anyway, now it makes sense. So gonna be here zero, right? Now, this level have a new output, right? Which is V zero, V one, V two, and V three. So, sounds good. Now let's build the level uh, one. Level one, now I have those four inputs, right? So here we're gonna be what? V zero, here we're gonna be what? V one, here we're gonna be what? V two, here we're gonna be what? V three. Okay, now neighbors will we be what? Two power one, two power one is what? Two. So that means, you know, zero plus two, here we're gonna be what? V two. V one, that mean what? One plus two is gonna be V three. Uh, two V two is what? Two plus two is gonna be what? Zero. And then V three is what? Three plus two five. There is no five actually zero. In this case, I can tell you that you what you already have done. You build what? A shifting circuit. Bevel shifting circuit. And you can call this S0 and S1. Let's make a table, and this table will show us the effect, right? So I have here S1, I have here S0, and I have here P3, I have here P2, I have here P1, I have here P0. How many states this table will be covering? Huh. Four. Four. So 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So far so good. Now, if, if S1 equals zero, these two cases, right? Do you agree? So that pretty much V0 is equal what? Huh? V0, V1, huh? V2, V3. Do you agree? Low. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Now who gonna decide is zero, right? If is zero equals zero, so what does it mean? It means I zero, I one, I two, I three will be the output, right? So gonna be here, I zero, I one, I two, I three. So in that case, you know, here I did what? Here basically I perform rotate right four equal to rotate left four equal to the uh, uh, whatever shift, uh, no, not shift, uh, origin. I did nothing here, right? But what about if I make S zero equal one? What will happen? So pretty much this is the equal one, I one. That will be I2. That will be I3. That will be zero, right? So gonna be here zero. They're gonna be I3. They're gonna be I2. They're gonna be I1. So this is what? Shifting towards what? To the right. Exactly. So that's actually shift right. So far, so good. Now the V the, the S1 is equal one. So what does it mean? That mean you know P0 is equal what? V2. P1 is equal V3. Uh, B2 is equal zero. B3 is equal what? Zero. Right? You guys agree? Mm -hmm. So in yep. that case, you know, here's zero, zero, and here's zero, zero. I know that there's zero, <laughs> right? Because, you know, those are really uh, hardened to zero, right? Now, you know, we're going to look into the S is equal zero and S is equal one, right? If it's S is equal zero, what will happen? Hmm. V2 equal what? Is equal what? I3. I2. I2. That's my bad. I was looking at it. 
v3 will be equal what? Zero, right? So it's gonna be what? It's gonna be zero, and it's gonna be i what? I2, right? Then and let's try if it's s is equal one. If it's s equal one, that means you know v2 will be equal what? v2 will be i3, right? Uh, v three will be zero, right? No, I think I made a mistake. Isn't uh, v three equal to i three? You're gonna be i three. I'm sorry. You're right. So you're gonna be i three. I'm sorry. But in the other case, that will be zero, and they're gonna be i two. Mm. No, gonna be i three. I'm sorry. Right. Think, think, think about it, you know, S is equal what one, right? One, that means V2 is equal what I3. V2 is equal I3. Then, you know, V3 is equal zero. V3 is equal zero. And those two guys actually came from this, right? So what we did now, we shifted how many times? Three times. Three. Three. So here we shifted, shift, right, two, shift, right. That makes sense. And of course, I don't care about you know shifting four times because you know it will be zero, zero, zero. So we build a circuit performing what we are forming uh, shifting without even clock. But then you know how can you calculate the timing? Somebody can tell me. Hmm. How can you calculate the time? Critical path. Critical path. How are we going to define the critical path? <laughs> it's an easy, easy lemon squeeze, <laughs> right? I, I, basically, multiplexer is like this, right? Uh... You agree? Yes, yes. Then, you know, there will be another multiplexer, right? Another, another set like this, right? Correct. And then does a select have different, it's, it's different selects, right? Yeah, yeah, the select zero, the select one, right? Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you think about it, this one passing, this one, right? Yeah. So then you know, you can define what is your longest path. What is your longest path? The select path. This one. Right? This is the longest. And if you know response time for every single one, let's say this is 2t, this is 3t, this is 1t, this is 2t, this is 3t, this is 1t. So then you know we already have 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 2, 8, 8 plus 3, gonna be what? 11t. And let's say that t is basically 4 nanosecond. Then you know I can come and say that you know this circuit takes 11 times 4 nanosecond to produce an output at a time. Make sense? Any question? Nope. Um, yes. I have one. Why do why don't we do four by ones instead of two by ones. Multiplexers when we're building the rotating. Same thing. What is the smallest element you can use? Two by one. But then you know okay. you can build you build like a net list to make it four by one coming from two by one, right? Yeah. 
Okay. Make sense? Okay. Now, if I would like to build a rotation, it's not really hard, right? I'm, I'm not going to repeat it because, you know, I think you guys also follow it, right? The only thing you need to do is what? This will be what? I0, right? This is going to be what? V0. That's going to be V1. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. But if you like to make both of them shifting and rotating, what are you going to do? We have another level of uh, multiple pictures. Exactly. So that will be like this. That's actually first level, right? Then the second level, make it bigger, right? so it will be easy for us to do it. Right, here's P0, P1, P2, P3. Here is what I0, I1, I1, I2, I2, I3, I3. Here we're gonna be what another multiplexer like this, selecting whether it's gonna be zero or what I zero. And that will be called shift rotate. And then you already have here V0, V1, V2, V3. Then you come here and say what V0, V1, V2, V3. And here we're gonna be what? Uh, v2, v3. Here we're gonna be what? Another multiplexer selecting is gonna be zero. We're gonna be what? V0. And here we're gonna be another multiplexer which is connecting zero or V1. And then the controller of those two multiplexer is what? Same as this one. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Then, how are we going to calculate the timing? <laughs> uh, do the chart like we've been doing before, but with the shifting and rotating element. So the longest ever pass of this circuit will be coming in what? In the, uh, sorry, the I2 at the very top. Pretty much, it will be V0. Like this, like this, like this. This is the longest ever, right? There is three of them longest ever, right? Is this the longest? I don't know what's calling me, I'll see. No. Where is the longest? Would it be at the beginning, the I2, the multiplexer at the I2? Mm. Which one? Which one again? The very left. This one you mean? No, uh, the one above, uh, top left. The I2, the I2 and the I3. You mean the this one? Yeah. yeah. What? Because, you know, look, they're going to go here, right? They're gonna get V3. Where's V3? You're gonna go there, right? Oh yeah. It's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. You see one, two, three, right? It is one, two, three. Yeah, three. Yeah. So the longest will be three cascaded, right? Make sense? Yeah, that's it. So that that was basically our lecture today. So is it clear? Yeah. Easy, busy, lemon, squeezy. Yep. You know exactly what you're going to expect from this. Basically build what? 
barrel shifter to do shifting processes. Yep. So imagine if I would like to make a complicated system. You're shifting or shifting and rotating? Shifting and rotating, right? But I have a question. What about if I would like to make it arithmetic shifting? How I'm going to do it? Can you guys remember the arithmetic shift? You, you would have to check. Hmm. You or... have to check what? I think the I3, that's it. <laughs> no, don't you have to check for if the, if the, uh, if the, what is it? The carry value is zero or one? No, not true. Basically, you know, in, in the arithmetic shifting, you are considering the most significant bit is the bit I'm going to shift with, right? You agree? Mm, okay. Make sense? Oh. Yeah, you're gonna push with instead of zero, you're gonna push with what? I three. <laughs> Sorry, when you when you said arithmetic shifting, I I immediately thought of the multiplication that Look we did. This. Right? This is the most significant. You agree? If I would like to make yep. shift arithmetic right so then i will take this like that and it's going to be b3 and then i will push so it's going to be b3 b2 b1 and then you know if i would like to shift one more time i give it here b3 and then you know it's going to be b3 b3 b2 and then if i would like to shift one more time so i'm going to get it like this b3 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 right yep it's understandable. So if you like, you can add extra uh, option here that will add it what the arithmetic uh, shifting as well. Okay, so if you like to see a system, we build the memory, right? So imagine that I will build a processor like this. Save is my memory. Then, you know, I have here a bus is four bit. Then I have here, what the heck was this is here? Let's see, four bit, right? And then I will put a box here of the parallel shifter, another box of the parallel shifter, right? Then you know I will take here four bit output, here four bit output. Then you know I will go ahead and I will put this inside what ALU, and this ALU has a selector. If it's zero zero, I add. If it's zero one, I subtract. If it's one zero, I multiply. If it's one one, I divide. Then you know I will get the output. The output it should be what multiplication is the biggest one, right? So it's gonna be the biggest, it's gonna be eight bit. All right. Then you know I will connect this to what seven segment display. And uh, then you know the memory, it can have here input port and it has here addresses. And of course, since I have two ports outputs, so I have to have here address. Uh, read A, and I have here address read B. And then, you know, I can hear address, all right. Then, you know, my input here, it can be what connected to switches or bit switches. So every time I check here counter, it will push you an input, 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 input. And those two guys are just going into push data and you process in seven segment display. My question, we learn how to build the counters, uh, counters. We know how to build the memory, right? We know how to build the repel shifter. We know how to build the ALU from the multiplication and subtract and, uh, and addition. We didn't talk about division. It's not really hard. I can tell you more about it. Then, you know, we, after that, you know, we get this and, you know, we know how to use seven segment display. We can build the encoder and we already have this before and we discuss it. So the whole entire system we can build uh, from the knowledge we already learned from the 2300. That makes sense? 
Yes. Did you see how it's really beautiful? <laughs> so, what are gonna make it easy for you instead of having breadboard and wire all of this big hell thing? You're gonna be writing a code belong to every single component and we call it module. And then all of this together will be mapped in one chip and this chip is called FPGA. And the tool is used is called Vivado for Xinex platform or Quart Quartus for Intel Altera platform or called Diamond for micro semi, which is part of the micro chip uh, FPGA or uh, <clears throat> lattice uh, from the lattice semiconductor, semiconductors FPGA. Professor, what does that say after, before, like after diamond? Micro semi. Okay. Micro, micro semi. That's but you have you the microchip, right? You know microchip. Yes. So yes. you guys gonna have a course in microcontrollers about pick it, you know, something like this, right? They use something that's called M lab. That's for the microcontroller. No, this is called Diamond Software. It's for the microchip. What FPGA use for the space application? They call it radiation hard. Okay, any question? Any concern? In that case, I can say it was my pleasure to talk to you guys today. Hopefully you guys learning something new from this course and hopefully also you're enjoying the course so far. And uh, the coming lecture on Monday, is it Monday? When is there? Wednesday. When is that? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be, uh, I wish it would be Monday. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the deadline is coming soon. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, that will be covering what the sequence, what detector. And after that, we can see, I can I can make some collection of stuff. If you guys like, I can even talk to you about the divider. And uh, then, you know, after that will be just like wrapping up Maybe show you something about how Vivado and Verilog work. And it's, sounds good. The final, is it cumulative or is it just this last section we're doing? What do you think? I think it's cumulative. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, regarding that uh, NASA project that you put on Slack, do you have any more information about that? Or, or you... you know, I already wrote uh, the proposal and I'm waiting for NASA to reply back. They're going to reply back June 1st. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. And I'm anybody interested, I will take him. Great. But he's going to work. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> it makes sense? Yes, sir. And if you guys like to work with me in some of my projects in summer, go ahead. There is some funding in the university you can apply for, so you can also get paid while you're working for me. You know? Have you heard That's about this? Great. Mac. Near CBB, Mac near CBB, you know, summer project 2021. Here, Mac near. Everybody can see my the link I sent in the chat. Mm -hmm. And then I will put it for yes. you also on what on our lovely channel on the Slack. And even if you guys like after you know the course is over to keep this Slack channel and I will post the stuff for you, I will do it. Even though that's you know I will not be teaching you, but that's fine. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, I put it there. Let me find you more and more and more and more. There is more funding, you know. Let me find you another funding. Uh, okay, what other funding, Mohammed, you have in mind for them? There is something, it's called early career NASA, but I don't know. Uh, no, that's not for you guys. 
summer projects. Some of the series projects here. I found it. Adding, adding, adding. I'm going to check the deadline. Some of them pass, some of them is not. I don't know. Oh, look at this bunch of grants. Oh my gosh, you can look at it. Yeah. Okay, everything on a Slack. Sounds good, everybody? Sounds good. Okay, it was my pleasure to talk to you. Stay safe. God bless you and see you on Wednesday. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Talk to you, you later. Professor. Thank you, guys. See Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Professor. Bye-bye. Professor, real quick. Uh, if I have um, possible missing points on the exam, can I email you about it? Which exam? Uh, this past exam.